Many thanks for staying with us on TVC News. It's time now to talk about uh, the power sector in Nigeria. Yes. And back here in Lagos State, the government is calling for a review of Nigeria's power generation and distribution laws. This under the purview of the federal government. And it says this is due to the huge amount spent on diesel power generators by private individuals and businesses in the state. And this move comes just as the state government has revealed that it had injected about a thousand transformers into the national grid to improve power supply to the benefit of or for the benefit of residents, but it is yet to yield the desired result. But the Lagos Commissioner for Energy Resources, Ola Lirio Dushote, says the state government came up with the Lagos electricity sector policy with the aim of providing universal access to power for all its residents. And he says the draft of the Lagos electricity uh, bill was before the state's House of Assembly for consideration. And when implemented, it will take a regulation of electricity from the center and domicile it with the Lagos regulatory agencies. And that's what we'll be talking about now. We have with us in the studio the Lagos State Commissioner for Energy Resources Engineer, Olali Odushote. And uh, we're glad to have you join us at this time. So when you look at the background to this interview, what exactly is the Lagos State government hoping to achieve? Well, thank you for having me and thank you for that question. Currently, um, one of the problems that Lagosians have complained about, one of the leading problems they've complained about is the lack of electricity supply or adequate and constant electricity supply. We looked at that and we tried to understand what the problems were. We um, circulated uh, a, con a consultation paper about two and a half years ago to all the industry players and all the residents or anybody who was interested to let us know what their concerns were. And the end result of all of the commentary was the Lagos State Electricity Policy, which was unveiled in December of last year. Now, following on from that policy, we have written, we've drafted a law that has now been approved by the Lagos State um, Executive Council and is now before the Lagos State House of, House of Assembly. What that law does is to move the regulation of electricity distribution, generation, and transmission that's going on solely within Lagos State from the center to a Lagos State regulator. Now, it's not, we're not working um, in, in a silo. The federal government or the National Assembly is currently reviewing the existing federal law with a view to doing the same thing, decentralizing regulation of electricity regulation from just the center to the different states that are willing to take it on board. The Nigerian Senate has currently passed its own version of the bill, recognizing the responsibility of the state governments to create um, state electricity markets and the House of Representatives is currently looking at its own version of that bill. We hope that they can come up with um, a bill that would work for Nigerians in the near future and we can all discuss it robustly and come up with a better electricity sector. Well, what's the difference between the state's own version of the bill which is before the House of Assembly here in Lagos and um, the one in Abuja before the House of Representatives? They do the same thing. If the House of Reps passes, if the House of Assembly, National House of Assembly passes a law. The National House of Representatives, if, if they pass that law, you the mean? The National Assembly, if okay. they pass a law that says that electricity should be regulate, deregulated, then the states must also come up with their own laws to then take over the regulation of electricity because there cannot be a gap. If the National Assembly passes a law and the states do not pass a law that is in line with the National Assembly's laws, then we're still going to have um, the same. The status quo will remain. So the states have to be ready to take on the responsibility when the National Assembly or the federal government decides to hand off that responsibility. So this is like in the eventuality that the National Assembly will indeed you know, accommodate or the laws will accommodate state governments to have their own version. But we already have a, some form of, um, you know, staggered generation that has been privatized. But if this happens, the transmission and the um, the transmission beat especially, isn't that a bit? How, how are you going to work around it? Because as it is, there is a TCN, uh, you know, at the federal level, and we understand that there are problems within the system. But how is it really going to help help everyone? as against you know, one national grid? Well, today, if you look at the um, national electricity supply industry, most of the electricity that's supplied is actually from private generation. Today, when we say Nigeria generates 4,000 megawatts of electricity, that's not actually correct. That's the amount of electricity that's generated and put on the grid. 
In reality, if we were to calculate the amount of electricity that's generated from a mixture of private owned and public owned um, in, or publicly developed infrastructure, we have about 20,000 megawatts, meaning about 4,000 megawatts is supplied onto the grid and about 16,000 megawatts from our estimate is self-generated, meaning all of the generators owned by federal governments, state governments, local governments, corporates and individuals add up to about 16 gigawatts of electricity. All of that electricity is not brought to the, um, the grid. So if we look for a means of ensuring that we're able to dispatch all of that for the benefit of all of us, then we think the um, grid will be a lot more stable and a lot more effective. So that's what um, we think the states bring to the table. The states can organize the electricity sector within their states a lot better than the federal government is able to do it from Abuja. And we think once we start to do that and everybody starts to play, then, then we'll have a better electricity sector. NERC itself has said it, that the states should take up their responsibility, at least at the hearing in Abuja in March, that's what they said, and that it will be better for everybody if we all start to play a role in this market. And for the benefit of consumers watching, how do they come in into the mix? Some may also be thinking about the financial um, implications of, um, you know, a scenario where the states are now, you know, having some form of, you know, power to regulate the sector, at least in their domain. I don't see what the problem is because the regulation is already existing, but the regulation is, um, it's a bit remote. Meaning today, the National Assembly has passed, passed a law creating one regulator. That one regulator has granted licenses to distribution companies, a transmission company, and generation companies. We think there are lots more companies that are waiting to be licensed and hoping that they can be licensed. And when that deregulation, when that decentralization happens, the um, state regulators will be in a better position to determine who else should be licensed to carry on activities that will then ensure that there's a better coverage of a network in those states. All right, but help us also understand the, the current situation of, um, you know, metering with, with a large percentage of Nigerians, you know, unmetered, and um, how the government of Lagos State hopes to solve uh, this, this, this problem when it comes on board. Well, we've already started. Um, the governor of Lagos State, um, Governor Babajili Olushala Songolu, has put a stake in the ground by placing an order for 20,000 meters. And of those 20,000 meters, we believe that in the next couple of days, about 2,000 of those meters will be distributed in certain areas of Lagos, precisely the Alimosho area, the specific areas that have been identified as a pilot location where those meters will be distributed. We expect that once those distributors, those meters are distributed, there'll be a better collection from the distribution company in that area and there'll be, um, there'll be more of an incentive for them to supply more electricity into that area. We have, if you ask, depending on who you ask, a meter gap of about a million in Lagos. Absolutely. Now, to buy one million meters is going to cost a lot of money, so it's really up to the state to see how we can intervene in, the, in, in, the, um, in helping to ensure that we can get those meters supplied into the distribution oh, system. All right. L let me see if I can squeeze in this last question. Introducing this interview, the, there was this bit about the state government saying it had injected a thousand transformers uh, also into the system, but that it's yet to yield any result as expected. Help us clarify that bit. Well, over the past, well, since the um, new civilian administration came in, the state government at least in Lagos, has made a lot of efforts into trying to improve electricity supply. And where we've been told that it was um, infrastructure gaps, we have made an effort to ensure that we buy some of those transmitters. I get letters on my table every day from different CDAs and individuals asking for relief transformers. And we do our best to see how much of it we can provide. But the distribution companies are privately owned entities. And the state government is not really keen on continuing to provide grants to private companies. So if other people want to come into the business of supporting the distribution company and co-invest in the distribution company, we intend to help them to do that. All right. So, uh, and then what's the future like as per other alternative um, you know, forms of, of power in, in Lagos State? W what's your, um, how is your eye on the ball in that regard? Oh, yeah. When you say alternative so forms of power, we start to talk about the energy transition, right? That's what it sounds like to me. Today in Lagos, we have about um, 8,000 new diesel generators that have, just brought, that have just been brought on board. Lagos is the most densely populated city in Nigeria. We can't afford to continue to pollute the environment with this proliferation of diesel generators. Mm. So we're looking at alternatives. We're trying to encourage solar. Lagos State has just um, published a new off-grid strategy and plan, which is available on our website for anybody who wants to look at, which is to encourage 
people to look at um, off-grid transfer, uh, um, sorry, um, look at alternative means of generation. Which website are you referring to? The Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources. Okay. Right. So it's, um, I imagine that we can publish that um, that link on this um, on this station at mm -hmm. some point, perhaps after the interview. All right. All right, perhaps in, uh, we look forward to you no know, more engagement so, so we can you know, help to drive uh, this um, information from your, your ministry, of course, now for the benefit of Nigerians and other private individuals who are desirous uh, to come in. But in the meantime, we thank you very much for uh, speaking to us and you know, explaining all these um, naughty areas uh, for well, us. Thank you for having Many me. Many thanks again.